Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to start this new week. As we begin class today, I would like to read to you from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, the end of it. Speaking of Jesus, the scripture says this, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus' willingness to take our sins to the cross. We thank you for placing him where he belongs at your right hand. Lord, we praise your name, and we pray this through Jesus' name. Amen. So you have done a great job with expressions, and today we're going to start equations. We are going to learn about equations, solve equations. It's going to be great. So let's talk about what an equation is. An equation must contain these two things. First, an operation. So the operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So an equation must contain at least one operation and it must contain an equal sign. So there's a balance for equations. This side must have the same value as this side. And so we're going to begin solving equations by looking at how to write an equation because you know that in life, there rarely are you going to be handed a piece of paper with an equation written out on it that you have to solve. So we're going to think about real world situations and how to write equations and then how to solve those equations. So let's take a look at some. So I have a few equations written on my board. Notice they all have an operation and they have an equal sign. So the equal sign tells us that this side of the equation has the same value as this side of the equation. So these are math facts. I've chosen them because we can do these problems mentally, but we will expand what you already know to be able to solve problems, equations that are not math facts. And so let's look at this first one. This is an addition sentence. So three plus X equals five. Now, you know, what are we going to add to three to get five? Well, you know your math fact. So you know that X is gonna be equal to two. If X is two, three plus two is in fact equal to five. Let's do a subtraction one. Seven minus X equals one. What can we take away from seven to leave us with one? Again, you know, X equals six. Here we have a multiplication equation. Do you see the multiplication sign? No, but we know that when we put a number up against a letter or a letter up against another letter, then the operation is multiplication. We are multiplying six times the value of X. So six times X equals 30. X has got to be equal to five because six times five is 30. This is a way of showing division. So remember, we've shown division multiple ways, but every fraction is a division problem. Yes, you know this. So this is 4 divided by x equals 2. 4 divided by what number is going to give us 2? You know. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So keep this in mind as we write our own equations. So pause the video now, go get your textbook, Meet me back here. I'm going to begin on page 597. So get your textbook open to page 597. 
Okay, I hope you've gotten your textbook and you have turned to page 597. It is, um, this is lesson two. You might notice that we skipped lesson one. It's okay, we'll come back and hit that a little bit later. Uh, we are going to write our own equations here and we need to think about some words that will help us in this. So this little activity says, to write keywords that indicate, indicate each operation in the graphic organizer. So what are some words that indicate that we would add? You might say more, right? I have more cookies than you. You might say increased. You might say sum. If, a, if we want to know the sum of something, we are going to add. So let's look at subtraction. Maybe it's less. I have less than you. Uh, maybe it's decreased. Or maybe it's difference. Let's look at, you might have others that you're writing. That's great. Um, let's look at multiplication. Maybe it's times. Maybe it's, um, we're looking for a product. Maybe it's um, times as many. Now let's look at division. Um, maybe you're thinking of a fraction name. Maybe it's half or a third. Um, maybe it's um, we're finding the quotient. Maybe in multiplication and division, it's equal groups. Um, there's lots and lots of other words, and we'll, we'll encounter those words as we go along. So go ahead and turn the page to write equations. So we're going to do several of these examples together as time allows, um, because it's helpful to see these words put into play. So um, our, our directions are to write an equation for each real world problem. An orange and a cup of juice are 200, okay. And that's a key word. An orange and a cup of juice are 210 calories. An orange has 90 calories. How many calories does a cup of juice have? So this has been done for us. The orange has 90 calories and so we could put and in that list of words on the previous page. And the juice, we don't know how much the juice has, but they are, e together they are equal to 210 calories, okay? All we're doing is writing the equation right now, we're not solving it at all. But rather than jumping immediately to subtraction, write the equation as the situation presents itself. Again, we're gonna to get to more complicated situations as we go along. Example number two, Lake Arrowhead State Park has three less, less hiking trails than Irwin Park. Lake Arrowhead State Park has five. So they have three less than Irwin. Like Arrowhead has five, how many does Irwin have? So we don't know how many trails Irwin has, but we do know that Lake Arrowhead has three less than Irwin and they have five. So our equation is this, E, if we've chosen E as our variable, minus three equals five. I think I talked to you about that 
when we looked at expressions. This is the hardest thing to write down is are these subtraction expressions or in this case equations. So define your variable. What does your variable represent? And make sure that this really represents the situation. Look at example number three. Seven tickets to the Children's Museum of Brownsville cost $35. Seven tickets cost a total of $35. How much does one ticket cost? So we can write, or they wrote, seven tickets, seven T, you know, because seven of them, of means multiply. Here's our of. Uh, no, it's not. Second, that's not the right of. Of is implied, okay? Seven of the tickets. So 7t equals 35. Don't try to solve at this point. We're going for the equation, okay? Let's look at one more. Ground beef is being divided in, divided, oh my, divided into four hamburgers. Each burger is six ounces. How many ounces of beef are there all together? So we don't know how much we started with, but we do know we're dividing it into four equal groups. And we end up with six ounces in each group. So this, like the subtraction equation, really important to put them in their proper order, okay? So, Let's, let's continue on. Um, if we have time, we'll go back and catch some of those got it problems. So represent solutions to equations on the number line. So we're going to represent the solution on the number line, which means we're going to look at some math fact kind of equations like we did before, but this time we're going to put the solution on the number line. Most of these number lines have no numbers, which means you don't have to have zero. This is just a portion of the entire number line and you can make it whatever por portion that you wanna make it. So again, hear me say, this does not have to include zero. If the number is, the solution is 20,238, zero would not be helpful on this portion of the number line. So make the portion of the number line whatever portion you want it to be. So x plus seven is 13. What can we add to seven to get 13? Well, you know that we can add six to seven to get 13. So x is gonna be equal to six. So look at my number line. Do I need zero? No. How about if I make five, six, seven, eight, to put the solution on the number line, I just put six, make these equal increments. You can decide about the increments and put the point directly on the line at um, the little tick mark that indicates that exact number. So again, this is putting the solution on the number line. Don't need zero, don't need one. Here we go. This is a multiplication equation. Negative eight times W equals 32. So what are we gonna multiply negative eight by to get a positive 32? Well, we know that when you multiply a negative times another negative, you get a positive. So W has to equal neg a negative number and it's gonna be negative four because eight times four is 32 and a negative times a negative is a positive. So here's our number line. Do we need zero? Not necessarily, but be careful when you're ordering your number line. Think of the number line that is in our classroom. I have an example here. Notice that the the numbers go in a particular way. So here's zero, the positive numbers work up 
from the zero and the negative numbers work down from zero. So make sure that your number line goes in this direction. So our, our solution is negative four. Let's make it negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. Solution is negative four. We're gonna put it on the number line right there. Again, the point goes on the line itself and you can number the tick marks however you like, okay? So um, let's do one more example. We're going to write real world problem, oh, can't see that. We're gonna write real world problems for equations. So given an equation, you can write a corresponding real world problem. So let's say, write a real world problem that can be represented by this equation, negative eight X equals negative 48. Okay, so you can see already that they have the, author of your textbook has decided to make this a temperature situation. So the temperature dropped eight degrees. Wouldn't we represent that as negative eight? Sure. Each hour, do we know how many hours? Not yet. After so many hours, the temperature had dropped 48 degrees again dropped 48 degrees will represent that as negative 48. For how many hours did the temperature drop? We are not asked to um, solve this equation only to write the real world problem that is represented by this equation. So let me reiterate, our goal for today is to write equations from real world problems and to write real world problems from equations and to put our solutions on a number line, okay? Again, with the number line, zero, one, doesn't have to be part of the number line. It's just a segment of the line. So you choose what segment of the line you like. You'll find your homework for today in Google Classroom. I hope you have a great, great day.